experience of Jesus is not ordained by God to be second. Hello? To what the disciples experience. If we will let the Holy Spirit take us on a process of discovery to recognize Jesus. It is that recognition that will do something inside of you that you will be able to stand up like Paul said, the life I now live in the flesh, I do not live it just in the flesh, but it is the Son of God who lives in me. It is this understanding. Paul did not walk with Jesus physically. Hello, I told you sometimes ago that the experience that God ordained for us is not meant to be second to that which the original apostles had with Jesus. And you can prove that with the things that Paul did. He did not have a, an encounter, physical encounter with Jesus. But because of what the Holy Spirit did with him, I'm telling you like you already know, that is where God wants us to be. The problem is in the believers of today, we need to be transported by the word in fellowship with the Holy Spirit to get to that point whereby when you say Jesus, hello, when you say Jesus, you have a picture in your mind. You recognize whose name you are calling. A lot of believers, when they say Jesus, eh, they are saying it in a religious sense with a religious understanding. But I'm telling you, when you come to this point, whereby you recognize Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branch, my extension. People of God, something changes in you. When you face mountains, when you face darkness, when you face valleys and you are calling on that name, something changed in your life. It will be a transportation in the believer's experience that will bring us into this reality that we will be able to say like Paul, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. People of God, I am there, and I'm, and I'm going to show this generation that the Jesus of the Bible is the same Jesus that we are talking about, and he is not inferior to the Jesus of yesterday. Praise God. Hallelujah. You got any people of God? I want to get this generation to come to experience the reality of Jesus. It is the word. It is the word. That is where it is contained. That as we begin to get a hold of this revelation, I'm telling you, it will change your life. When you say Jesus, you know you are calling the name of somebody. When you say Jesus, you know that you, you have a picture of the reality of who you are talking about. Mark 6, 53 to 56. The Bible says to us there, when they crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and anchored there. They were just by the beach. They stayed somewhere. He said, and when they came out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him. What did they do? They ran through the whole surrounding region and began to carry, hello, about on birds, those who were sick, to wherever they heard he was. Wherever he entered, into villages, cities, or country. They laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were made well. What happened here? The Bible said they recognized Jesus. They knew that this was not just another scribe. They knew that this was not just another teacher or another rabbi. They knew that this wasn't just another Pharisee. They recognized and they said, this is the son of God. This is the son of David. 
He has come to bless us. And the Bible said, wherever they heard he went, cities, villages, or country. Which means this Jesus spent more than a day in Gennesaret. The Bible said they were carrying sick people on what? Bed, what we call stretchers today. Ambulance was getting packed out. They were working overtime 24-7. Hey, there is a group of people at the junction of Azusa and First Street. There is another group of people on Lakewood in that place. The Bible said wherever they heard that Jesus was within the vicinity of the city or the country of Gennesaret, they were bringing people there. Jesus, listen very carefully what happened here. They said, Jesus, you don't even have to worry about anything. The only thing that we want is just you allow as many that are sick to come and touch the hem of your garment. People of God, this is what I call miracle crusade. This is what I call a miracle that turns a city upside down. I am telling you, after this encounter with Jesus, the city of Gennesaret, there was no man or woman there that was sick. Because the Bible said here, whatever disease they may have, whoever touched him, because they recognized who they were dealing with, people, listen, this is what I call the law of recognition. It was what unleashed the grace. It was what unleashed the virtue. Jesus didn't have to do anything. They said, Master, you just stay put. Just let us touch the hem of your garment. And that's all that we need to do. And people of God, they recognize who that we are dealing with. I am sharing this with you in order that you may recognize the person of Jesus, his authority. In Mark chapter number 16, where we read, he said, go in my name. Before then, in Matthew, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. And he said, therefore, go. I'm telling you today, I am going in that name. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, this generation need to experience it and know that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. He's alive. The Son of God is in our midst. The Son of God is in our days. And therefore, when I come out to pray for the sick, I am not doing it in my name. I know whose I am and I know in whose name I am coming. It is not about me. Listen very carefully. I recognize somebody in me. Hello, did you get it? I recognize the person in me. And you too need to recognize him in your life. That it is not just a sign of the cross. No, he is alive in you. When this awareness, when this becomes done in you, how do you say poor me? Oh no, you don't recognize who is in you. The Bible said greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That devil is a liar. People of God, when you recognize, when you come to recognize this Jesus, this Jesus, that he is alive, yeah, yeah, something begins to break out inside of you. The greater you begin to show up, we function on the level of our knowledge. Hello? Did you hear what I just said? Hello, believers. You function at the level of your knowledge. The more you know, the better the way you function as a believer. You need to get, oh, shikiyanta. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help you to open up so that you will come into this new dimension of greater knowledge in order that you may function in the dimension whereby the name of Jesus is productive and fruitful in your life. This is not a religious experience, people. I must tell you, I must tell you. In this church, no, we don't do religion here. Can you please say that to yourself? Say, we don't do religion here. Can you please look at somebody to your left and to your right and say, we don't do religion here. 
Amen. No, 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 no. This is the house of God. We don't do religion in this place. Oh, no, far be it from us. There are a thousand places you can go if you want religion of Christianity. But in this house, no. No, no, no. We declare the Son of God who died and rose again from the dead. We declare the power of the risen Jesus, the head of the church, the Son of God, and the soon coming King. He is alive. He is alive in me. He is alive in you. Are you ready for the Son of God? People of God, we discover in this world, the Bible said, because they recognized him, they went everywhere. But they could get hold of that came to Jesus in Gennesaret. It said, everyone who could touch him got healed. The opposite happened in another place, in the city of Gadgesin. In that place, the Bible told us that Jesus, that was the city where Jesus delivered that man that was living in the tomb, so in the grave. Hello. The Bible said when the man was healed, he wore clothes and sat down in his senses. He said, but when the people of that town came and they saw what had been done to the man, who was formerly possessed and living in the graveyard. And what has been done to the sheep. The Bible said they begged Jesus. They said leave. Get out of here. We don't want you. Hello somebody. They said Jesus we don't want you. Get out. And what did Jesus do? He left. I'm telling you there were a thousand people in the city of Gagosin who could have been delivered and healed of whatever disease they had just as it happened in Gennesaret. But the people of Gagosin, they were more concerned about their financial base, about their profit, about how they feel than what they could gain from Jesus. They did not recognize the authority and the power of the Son of God. And as such, they missed out.